you know, like even with George traveling to all these places, um, he stood out. I think Switzerland, you were like number one. Portugal, like Portugal. Portugal. I went a couple weeks in scoring. Just that's blessed, man. I can't even take the credit. Like wow. God, God put me in a position to do what I do and. When you see my talent, you see him just using me for real. To be definitely, with you. definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah, so, you know, I'm gonna let George talk for a little while. I'm not keep talking. <laughs> no, I, I like my arms being the mouthpiece. That's cool. <laughs> Hold on one second, guys. We still pray. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and one and one thing really quick, guys. I, I, so I just want to share with the audience because I, I think I was experiencing a little bit of technical difficulty. So, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, welcome to Transition Tuesdays. I'm your host, Russ Williams. I got two my special guests, okay? Ms. Deborah Beeman and Mr. George Beeman. Okay, we going, we're going to break down some things. They've been sharing with us, you know, growing up, um, George, rearing George to play. You know, all everything is faith based, which is great. You know, you had you had the mom; she was ripping up football stuff when he was three years old. <laughs> just keeping the, just keeping everybody accountable for him and seeing what's going on. And see who else is checking. We got Felicia on the check in. What's going on, Felicia? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. We also we have. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Is Jesper uh, J U S T P H E on the check in? Super blessed and super humble to be here. Appreciate having you here on Transition Tuesday. Hey, so George, really quick. When did you first fall in love with basketball? Was it three years old or, or was it a certain time when you were older, like when you like fell in love with the with the sport of basketball? I always enjoyed playing it, but to say I loved it at three, I mm -hmm. just enjoyed it. Like if basketball was around, I needed it, you know what I'm saying? Right. And as I start to grow older, started just get more in tune with what I like and what I enjoy, mm -hmm. I really Taking it serious, maybe like seventh grade summer, mm. going into eighth, I started to get like real good, and like that's when like the schools was reaching out, the private schools, St. Dominic, St. Mm. Mary, mm -hmm. come in, all over. You know what I'm saying? So I was getting a lot of like attention. You know what I'm saying? Playing PAL, mm -hmm. just black. You know what I'm saying? So seventh, eighth grade, I started to take it real serious. I'm like, yo, I could, I could do this at the next level, and I, I enjoy doing it. It's nothing I would rather be doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. so much and it was just a blessing and God used me to get his word out through my basketball game and I've reached so many people with my faith, you know what I'm saying? When they mm -hmm. speak to me, have a conversation with me, I can just, you know, represent his faith and what he's done for me and it's just a blessing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For people to, for people to receive that, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. speak that and just really stand on that. That's my foundation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now mom do you have any like athletic experience? Are you growing up? Did you play hoops or did you play any sports? I really only used to run very fast. Okay. <laughs> I'm a leader. Hmm. Uh, never really liked basketball, but I love basketball. Uh huh. Um, but I wanted to put in here also that, like, you know, it was truly a blessing for George to receive. Five years at Manhattan College. Yeah. Free. Yes. So it, it could have only come from God. No doubt. Like, you know, even now, like, seeing what God is doing mm -hmm. and be, it's being manifest in the natural realm is like amazing. Mm hmm. Man. Like, I have fire in here. Mm hmm. I have gospel station going. <laughs> Hear ya. Mom, are you a preacher? Because if you are, I'm going I'm attending your church. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I haven't been ordained, mm -hmm. but like my relationship with God, like people actually call me, I minister to them. Mm. Um, see, 
I don't put nothing on Facebook unless God said, put this up here. Right. Uh, I send out prayers when God said, send these prayers out. So what I will add you to the list. Thank you. Appreciate that. Awesome and amazing. And honestly, today, prayer has always been very powerful. Yep. But I'm, I have to tell you that without prayer and faith, you're not going to stand. Right. So you have to have that spiritual anointing, that healing, that powerful embrace mm -hmm. to let you know the confidence. That no matter what, God is with you. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of times, especially after COVID, people kind of lost their ways. Like yeah. even with me, I had seven symptoms. Mm -hmm. I almost died. I had a fever, a hundred and six. Wow. And I'm still here. Absolutely. God. Thank God. And when I tell my testimony, like the doctors that I've spoken with are like. You're still here. And you had seven symptoms. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And that in um, 2020. Wow, man! I got to the lowest element. Like I couldn't talk. Man. I could walk. Uh huh. Off to a moan. Wow. I could pray, but I remember saying to God, "I'm not ready to leave yet." Mm hmm. And God answered my prayers. More work to be done. Restored my life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you from experience that people might think, oh, prayer is this, prayer. No, prayer is the most powerful weapon yes. mm -hmm. on earth. On earth. I agree. Yeah. Yes. That. But yeah, and it's like people say to me sometimes, well, you didn't send me no prayer yesterday. Because God didn't give me one. And mm. I don't like to do it on my own. Like, I need to hear God mm -hmm. spiritually. And right. then send that prayer out. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Let's see who else is checking in on the check-in. So we got Uncle Smoothie on the check-in. He says, hey, fam. I love it. <laughs> yes, yes. And we also have Kathy. Kathy says, so proud of you, my nephew. Keep doing what you love. Auntie loves you and misses you. Shouting you out from North Carolina. Good stuff. Yeah, hey, Kathy. <laughs> good. Love that, so yep, yes. that, that is good stuff. That's good stuff. Hey, so let's fast forward a little bit to high school for you, George. Like, what? how was the recruiting process like? For the both of you, because again, like I always tell people all the time, you know, I was fortunate when I when I was recruited, you know, I had my brother, had my mom and pops, they were involved in the recruiting process. So first off, so George, how was the recruiting process for you in high school? And then mom, were you involved in the recruiting process as well? I think I know the answer to it, but I just I thought I'd ask it anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was tough, like. Going to school in Long Island, you always behind like, oh, this city kid did this, this city kid did that. Mm -hmm. So you just behind the eight ball a little, you know what I'm saying? So yep. now I gotta go to Harlem, I gotta go to Queens, I gotta go to Brooklyn, I gotta go to the Bronx, and you know what I'm saying? Showcase my talent. So yep. I didn't mind doing that. Like I grew up playing against them guy. Every time I went out, they knew me, I knew them, and mm -hmm. let's get it. Right. Be the best. Like you know what I'm saying? And thank God I was ranked like my senior year. I was ranked like top. Eight and top five in New York State, you know what I'm saying? Wow. So it was a blessing. I was really, you know, put it on like a kid living in Long Island, you know what I'm saying? Not getting recruited, and then they still like, oh, he's too skinny. But I'll go to the city and do the same thing, you know what I'm saying? So right. I was really, I was you know what I'm saying? So right. that's where that thing come from. Like, I was really doing that, you know what I'm saying? I was really all over playing, mm -hmm. showcasing, doing what God put me here to do. So recruiting process was tough, but um, I had Stony Brook like my junior year. Okay. I had the schools, you know what I'm saying, but Manhattan was the right fit when I um walked in, spoke to Slice. It was just like I'm like, yo, Slice is a good guy, man. I don't know what people say, but yo, he's a great guy in my book. I love Slice forever. That's our family for life, man. Yeah. I, he, the, he know my birthday every day. I'm sure I'll be getting a text in a couple days from him. He wow. texts me every year on my birthday. Wow. 
not the coach every year since I've been there. So wow. that's my like that our coach De La Rosa, he was there when I first got there. Mm-hmm. And oh, man, a big part of like how I became a man and what shaped my life, man. Shout out to my brother DMK for playing basketball, let me see like what it looked like, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. how, how I can elevate from what he did, you know what I'm saying? It just strive to be better than that. So mm-hmm. the, the process was, was what it was, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm blessed how it went because I wouldn't be the person I am today without it. So mm-hmm. I just thank God for everything I went through, the struggles, because through every struggle, there's a breakthrough. And yep. That's what I got at the end, and I, and I broke through it, you know what I'm saying? I showcase what God put me here to do, and, you know? Mm-hmm. I hear you. I hear you, George. Chris says, Uncle Smoothie says, my man George keeps a 20 in his pocket. Is he... Does, does, <laughs> the, the, hey, hey, George, does he mean 20 points or $20 or both? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that thing, that thing, that thing, that Absolutely, man. So, uh, here's a question for you guys. So, why Manhattan? And who chose Manhattan first? Was it mom or was it GB? Which who who chose Manhattan first, and why Manhattan College? Well, I went there um, on a workout. My guy Rich, um, he and BJ, we we went up there, pause. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We went up there, and I had a workout. And I was killing. You know what I'm saying? I was doing my thing. Mm-hmm. I knew Antoine was missing. You know what I'm saying? Because he went to St. Dominic's and I was there with him for two years. So I'm like, oh, you here, bro? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, how you He's like, yeah, this place is cool. You know what I'm saying? It's my senior year. Like, we looking for somebody to come in and take that torch. Uh-huh. So I'm like, you know, why not me? I know a guy here. Slice embraced me. Coach Della Rosa embraced me. Coach Della Rosa is my guy, too. Mm. And, and yeah, and he's special. He's a great person. Mm. And he'll always be a my family. So they embraced me after that workout. They brought me in the room. They like, yo, we got one more scholarship. Wow. It's yours if you want it. You know what I'm saying? My mom was like, that's your scholarship. You know what I'm saying? That That's yours. Yeah. She told us that word. That's no clarification. She said, if you saw my son, I promise we'll get a championship, man. Wow. Four years later, they go that shit. You know what I'm saying? Slice wasn't the coach, but mm-hmm. Slice was a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Slice did all of that recruiting. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So, Master recruiter. Right. He's a fantastic recruiter, great guy, you know what I'm saying? He yep. just, you know, maybe he didn't get the fair chance, but yep. messed up in it, you know, then we got to where we needed to get, you know? Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Man, so you had that. So talk to me about the, okay, so we choose Manhattan, right? And you're doing well, you you know, you put up numbers. Talk to me about that championship shit. Um, you had, how many, how many chips did you have? One or two? I forget, offhand. I got one. One, I got one. right. I got one. Talk to me about that. And what year was that, GB? That was 2014. 2014, okay. But my, my DNA is all over that 2015. <laughs> right, so, right, right. I, right. I, I, I helped raise them and put them, you know what I'm saying? And I, I'm blessed with what they did, you know what I'm saying? They carried the torch in. Yep. I was so proud of them when I saw that, you know what I'm saying? Like, to two feet, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. God kind of, they looked up to you so they could go on and carry the torch and just showcase what you stand you know what I'm saying so it was a blessing it was a dope feeling just yep oh, yeah, man. it was so much pain that went into that so much struggle yep but like I said that breakthrough was nothing like it I wouldn't trade it for the world man that's great that's great talk to me about playing in the NCAA tournament who'd you guys play against you know we played Louis Vettel you yeah know I know I saw it but I, you know the, the audience has to know you know I, you know <laughs> for sure for sure we Right. That game was ours too for the taking, man. A couple calls didn't go our way, but yeah. you know, we don't nobody accountable. We was blessed to be there. 
did, but to play against them, man, you know, they think the fight, I know they remember that, so yeah. they definitely remember that fight, we gave them a war, so definitely. how was how God needed it to be, you know what I'm saying, I yep. was there blessed, mm-hmm. opportunity, mm-hmm. we Th- just blessed the opportunity to showcase our talent in front of all of those fans, my mom got to come out, Yep. I was blessed to have her there, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. all the way in Orlando, mm-hmm. NCAA tournament, like that, that was a blessing, man, um, mm-hmm. I'll never Absolutely. After this favor and grace, you know, and that's what we stand on. That's our foundation. So mm-hmm. we the next step and onto our next journey, and it's all going to be part of the testimony. That's right. That's right. Yep. Absolutely. Mom, tell me how you felt in the stands watching your son do his thing in the NCAA tournament. Talk to me, mom. Shared it together, which is cool yeah. too. Yeah, that's, that's great. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And um, just being in that arena, watching George on that court with the Jaspers was like, I can't believe where he, like, you know, mm-hmm. like almost in awe, like, wow. Mm. Um, but um, I know that it was done. All in God's purpose. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I know that the best is yet to come. Mm-hmm. And um, just waiting patiently. Mm-hmm. And standing on faith. There you go. Understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, GB, talk to me about the trend, you know, because this show is Transition Tuesdays that you on, obviously. But talk to me about the transition from high school to college and then from college to playing ball overseas. So let's let's take the transition from playing high school ball to playing college basketball. Was that a smooth transition for you?
No, I'm just saying, stay patient, stay still. And, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I decided to stay still, and mm-hmm. I didn't end up transferring, you know what I'm saying? So it was a blessing in disguise, so I could. Then we went to the uh, the MAC tournament, I believe. Mm-hmm. I'm still I'm playing a lot. I'm like, I don't know about this thing. She's like, just stay still. Right. First game, maybe something happened. We was down maybe a lot, 10 points. Uh-huh. So it's going. I scored like 14 straight. Whoa. Whoa. Like, gonna start for me next year. I said, say no more. Wow. I was the limit, you know. Slice, been, slice has been my God forever, you know what I'm saying? So uh-huh. that's just the work you put in. And a lot of college kids get, you know, misled or yep. promised that the coach don't fulfill. It's all about work and prayer. You show that work that, you show that prayer and that work, it's going to showcase when you get in the game. I didn't have to get ready because I stayed ready. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. now, I'm totally up. George ready. Right. I, I happen to, you know what I'm saying? I've always been a scorer at each level. So, yep. this point came natural. Then I fixed my shot up. Then mm-hmm. Scott was the for me. You know what I'm saying? So, wow. I was a, actually my junior year, I was a 40, 50, 80 guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. People don't do that, man, especially at the college level. So, that's true. That lesson and the testimony of the work I put in from where I started and the year before that I was shooting 15% from three so you could see the transition and the work I put in you know what I'm saying so yeah. overnight it's not no oh he was so good nah I had to put in work and pain yeah. and prayer yeah and, you know countless time in the gym so right kids watching or you kids striving to be great and play at that next level it's not a walk in the park but yeah. you can do all the price to strengthen us you know what I'm saying Just absolutely that prayer with you mm-hmm. and the limit you know what I'm saying each kid Long Island I don't know where you're from Queens Brooklyn Harlem right just keep working that and that spirit in you like, that spirit moves mountains so just man. as I said man the sky's the limit for all you guys watching right that's man that's that's great stuff GB to, to talk about that man talk to me about that transition okay from college you got your degree yeah of course what would you I'm on, I'm on my master's I got like five more classes now. Wow, that's extraordinary. Mom, I know you are happy about that, man. Yes, indeed. Very, very pleased. Mm-hmm. Man, that is so good. So, George, talk to me about that transition now to playing ball professionally. Talk to me about that, how that how that transition for, was for you. Professionally was kind of more easy, you know, by like, wow. like Right. Mm-hmm. Five a.m. Four hour practices. Film. Like I, I was so ready to become a pro. <laughs> right. and I, putting in this work, you know what I'm saying? And so. Yep. Like yo, you can sign this contract and make this. I'm like, oh, this is this is nothing. I, I do this without getting paid. Not gonna give me a paycheck. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. And I was able to, you know, perform there. I was averaging maybe 
seven there, even less minutes. So I was able to showcase my talent more with the Texas Legends. But right. I grew up on, you know what I'm saying? Like those transitions, like I, I made a family at Manhattan. That's my family. Mm. Some of my pro friends, like that's that's my family. Shout out Danny. I met him at OKC. That's my god for life, Dane Miller. So mm. it's you just get these relationships and you don't know why God puts you there or puts people there, but yep. you know it's for its purpose and you know it's for the greater good of him, you know. So mm-hmm. I don't question nothing no more. Everything I have, everything I got, everything I overcame, everything I didn't overcome yet, it's all his plan and it's all his timing and, and to mm-hmm. God be the glory for that, you know. So it's, mm-hmm. it's all that part of my testimony. So I don't look at like, oh, I didn't make this. Nah, I wasn't supposed to make that. Yep. Oh, I did. Oh, that was my blessing, you know. I didn't make that. That was somebody else's blessing. So mm-hmm. that's how you got to live life, you know. God shows people favor and some things are for you and some things aren't for you. But mm-hmm. no, it's for his greater good. It's mm-hmm. not always, you know. So I've learned more, more to live in the spirit instead of being selfish and living my selfish way. So yep. I'm more here now, and that's more the transition I took as a pro. I was either under, I was able to understand that transition. Mm-hmm. Understood, understood. And what's about to come your way, too, with the blessings of God as well. Just keep that in mind, too. Yep. Hey, hey, GB, do you, do you know, how many countries did you play in? Do you know offhand? Maybe like eight. Seven or eight. Can you, can I, I'm asking you a tough question. Maybe you could, or maybe mom can answer this. I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Can you remember in, in the order in which you, the countries you went to? Of course. Okay, what you got? Well, G League first. Okay. I stayed in the States. The next time I left the country, I went to the Dominican Republic. Okay, great place. Been there. Great, beautiful. Um, yep. Then I went to Iceland. Okay, Iceland. Then England. Man. Portugal, two years. Ooh. Switzerland. Mexico. Wow. Now, do you have a favorite place, favorite country? I played in Canada. Um, Canada too? Yep, that's Adam. Well, I went to DR. Mm-hmm. I was in Canada for like a month, but uh, okay. I don't know. We, we got to speak up. We, it was cool. Yeah, we can put we can put down the passport. We Let's add that. We keep that. Right. We count that stand. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, definitely count that stand. Wow. So you did all that. Do you got a favorite? Favorite country you enjoy? Well, basketball or living? Living. Living. <laughs> <laughs> living. Living, of course, U.S. is always home. You know right. What I'm saying? But I enjoy the Dominican Republic. Yeah. I enjoy because there's no like language barrier. Everybody speaks English. Everybody, you know, mm-hmm. London is it could be New York, so it was an easy transition there. But mm-hmm. DR was dope. Um, even Mexico was dope. Yeah, I, I had good experience in different places for different reasons. Like the culture, you get to see so much people. You get to experience people. You get to see like what their customs are opposed to yours, what you what you like, what they don't like. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's good to add all together and just see like how you live and how blessed you are to be free because some of these countries aren't even as free as, you know what I'm saying, as, yeah. as, as they say they are. So right. you get to see and it, see how it's happening. See how fortunate you are, you know. Shout yeah. out to my girl, Pat, man, and all big Yeah, England. That's one of my biggest fans. Pat from family. England. She wow. doing good. And her uh-huh. on the Facebook page, on the profile. Wow, that's and cool. Even, even a little while ago, she texted me and said, I love y'all so much. And I said, we love you too. Oh. Like, she grew attached to George. As soon as she met him, mm-hmm. and George has played in England in I don't know how many years, but mm-hmm. this lady is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so love you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is cool, man. That's cool. So I want to backtrack just a little bit, guys. So for for you, GB, now as you know, now we got a new coach at Manhattan College. Um, John, I think John Gallagher. Uh, and I know, I know you play with Coach Stores. I know that's your guy. So I just wanted to get your your thoughts on the matter. You know how things were handled. I think uh, with this process. I mean, I just wanted to get your take as a former player. 
you know, what was your take on all this for you personally? Yes, uh huh. so great we got on the check-in we got anisa on the check-in she says god don't miss ain't that the truth okay. <laughs> ain't that the truth man yeah okay man and, and you know that was you know and i appreciate you you know with those words gb you know because i you know i was i was rooting for stores too and again like you said it's probably bigger and better things down the line for that man too with with the prayer and everything too so you know everything works out for the better you know and um his time is coming his time is definitely coming yeah he he's a you know he's one of those bright you know bright young coaches up and coming coaches great experience for him to be the interim coach and uh yeah he, he'll land on his feet it's not a problem at all i know that for a fact absolutely yeah yep absolutely yep Mm hmm that's true so uh so guys I, i'm fortunate I'm, I'm i was inducted to the manhattan college hall of fame and i know oh oh thank you man thank you i appreciate it guys. i appreciate it but i appreciate it but george george i have to ask you man if you had to lobby for you being at you know for you being for at manhattan college athletic hall of fame like how many points did you score you know how many points you scored total points Oh Jesus, nineteen hundred! Oh my God, man, you, man! Hey, I tell you what, I only scored eleven hundred, so nineteen hundred is a is a. Well, you should be in there before me. I'm just saying, but <laughs> what? It, but if you had to, if you had to, George, well, how would you state your case for you being a you know Manhattan College Hall of Fame member? Uh, well, the work is there, so mm -hmm. I don't really know work that I put in like right. The Yep. Mm. There's so much off the court for Manhattan and that people don't understand. So wow. to see like what I what I really brought to the table, my spirit, mm -hmm. my my work ethic, my my family, then being my family and just being a leader for those guys, like a lot of stuff we went through, mm -hmm. I was the you know, just pushing guys, motivating guys, the younger guys, right. the guys that just being that presence that you need sometimes, you know, like, yo, what you doing? Maybe it's like, I'm, cur I'm cursing them out. Or maybe it's some, yo, let's mm -hmm. go. Like, maybe it's some kind words. It just depends. Whatever they needed, I was there. They want to joke. They want to laugh. They know I'm that, you know. So, mm -hmm. I've never drunk. I've never smoked in my life. So, I'm just, you know, one of the great role models that they could have and look up to. Like, oh, how you doing with this? Uh, all the glory to God. So, right. when they put that spirit in me, it woke something up in them, you know. So, I've been through it. 
those guys, man, the teams I was with, so much stuff that went on behind the scenes that mm -hmm. we just overcame it. You wouldn't even see it if you looked at a game like, oh, these guys just playing hard, resilient. Mm -hmm. But that's what I on resiliency, and um, that's what I bred on my mom. Birth me like that. Like, uh, mm -hmm. we came from, well, not from nothing. We came from the most high, but mm -hmm. look what we went through. This is all just a blessing. Anything after this, a blessing, because we really came from the bottom and just, you know, to make a way and just make a future for ourselves and be able to provide and show the young people, like, what they need to be doing and leaders and just mm -hmm. being a role model for people because a lot of people don't have that, don't yeah. have somebody, oh, I love this kid. Yep. This kid is what I want my son to be like, you know, and so many people come up to me like, I want my son to be like you. I want my daughter to mm -hmm. be like you. It's because mm -hmm. it's that spirit, man. Yep. That's what I want to be remembered for. The game is there. Like, mm -hmm. everybody, you know what I'm saying? Everybody know I can put the ball in the basket. Like, cool, that's dope. But right. my spirit, my leadership, my mm -hmm. grind, grit, that's all the stuff, like, that should put me in that Hall of Fame, man. Mm -hmm. I'm not too worried about it. Like, I think I kind of, I'm scared to get in there. But yeah. I don't want to sound cocky or overconfident. But I know the work I put in. Sure. I know the pain I I'm just blessed to, you know, be there. But I love it. Just, you know, my mom there standing beside me. Yeah, yeah. This is my, yeah, so. Yeah. I'm blessed that I got an opportunity to showcase her, you know, because mm -hmm. she is really just different and special and just so anointed. Like, mm, I, I got nothing but great things. Like, I could go on for hours about her. Like, right. She still, and still, what you see right now, this is what she like this is her and God like to mm -hmm. be honest mm -hmm. wow right I, I hear you man no I, I understand so GB man when you when you get the call when you're you know you're gonna be inducted in the Hall of Fame any people you're gonna thank for you to get this honor particular honor oh I ain't here by myself right. I, I would never be even front like that right um, most and foremost uh, he put me in position to be everything I am <laughs> my mother of course she probably would be there with me mm -hmm. I might not just go get it she deserves it she might just go <laughs> just go grab that for me y'all um, right my team uh, my family mm -hmm. just everybody that supported me the coaching staffs uh, mm -hmm. the alumni the fans Manhattan as a one mm -hmm. yeah. everybody I mean, embrace me. Like, I, I show love, you know what I'm saying? And a lot yeah. of people don't show love. I, I show love to everybody. It's not no malice or no right. hatred in my heart. Like, I, I'm blessed. Right. And that's what I strive on. Like, nothing was designed. Like, God put me here for a purpose, and I'm just living in his purpose. So mm -hmm. I'm just blessed to be able to do that. And when I get up there, it's going to be a blessing. Just another, you know, mm -hmm. testimony. So. Mm -hmm. I hear so, you. I, I hear you, George. Hey, man, hold that thought because, again, um, and I want you to get ready to write your speech because here's what I'm going to do for you guys because I'm, I'm on the Manhattan College Hall of Fame committee, and I need somebody to nominate. So now I'm just talking to you, and I know you got the numbers, and I know you had the game, and I know you know how you are in faith. I will be nominating you this year, So and I expect you to get in there. No doubt about that. No problem. No problem. I will be doing that. Yep, I needed somebody to nominate too. I was gonna nominate some other people, but nah, you 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 had me at when you just talked about from the nineteen hundred to everything else, man, the leadership and all that stuff. I won't be lobbying for you. So just 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 get the, just get that speech ready. Just like that. I like that. I got you. <laughs> no problem. Hey, so G B man, just a couple couple more questions I have for you guys, and I appreciate you guys. You know, joining me here today on Transition Tuesday. And if you just joined us late, I got Miss Deborah Beeman and Mr. George Beeman here on Transition Tuesdays. Welcome, everybody, for attending. If you joined us a little late, you know, we got, uh, it looks like Sean said, first ballot for sure. Uh, Danita says, keep going, George. We got, who else keeps saying stuff? We got Kathy says, such a great nephew. All these people are coming to bat for you guys, which I love. I absolutely love the conversation. That is cool. So, GB, man, since, you know, it's going to be Mother's Day coming up in May, 
But talk to me a bit about what your mother means to you, man. I, I, I can hear it in your voice, but what does your mom mean to you, man? great man now that's that's great george yeah mm-hmm. and mom what does your son mean to you Surgeries, 
He was right there at my side, like mm-hmm. just very close to me. Mm-hmm. And um, still now. Right. Like for my birthday last summer, the OBL um, production or whatever came to New York and did a whole documentary on George. Mm. George ordered hibachi. He knows I love <laughs> seafood, especially lobsters and shrimp. Uh huh. George had the hibachi man outside in the yard. Wow. And when I tell you, like, I was so shocked. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there's a man outside with a red hat on. What is he gonna do? Make popcorn or they like <laughs> no, you gotta come outside and put a tent and like um the camera production crew, they ate with us. Um they interviewed George from Rutgers that Thursday mm-hmm. to Raza that Friday to earlier that Sunday, which was the twenty first, my birthday. Mm-hmm. They went to the camp that George ran. Mm. And then they came here. Mm-hmm. And he said George had to leave and go to another playoff game that he won. Right. Uh huh. And the production team was still here mm. taking pictures of the trophy then. Right. And the basketball and the plaques. Uh huh. And it was just amazing. Wow. That is cool. That That's cool. Hey. Last question I have for you guys. So for you, I, I'll start with you first, George. So what's next for you, man? Is it playing in the league, playing in the D League, or playing overseas? Like, what's next for for, for my man, George? NBA always the main goal. Like that's okay. always the main. Um, right. Open that door. Up. Uh, I definitely got a couple more years in me to showcase that. Mm-hmm. I've been getting some offers back overseas. Okay. It's, it's the guys' hands, like. I, Right. I did have opportunities to go places, you know what I'm saying? And I've always been blessed to have somewhere to go and play. So just wherever God wants me, I'm going to keep praying about it and see where God leads me. But mm-hmm. I have already on the table to go back. And I have, you know what I'm saying, people working with the on the league side of things. And also after basketball, you know what I'm saying? I'm definitely looking at those things. Like, you know what I mean? I start, I've been doing a camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a camp like for the last like four years, you know what I'm saying? Just give it back, showcasing, mm-hmm. showing love, just mm-hmm. letting kids showcase their talent and letting them have a place to do it in a safe environment, you know what I'm saying? Not right. just a good environment, safe environment that they could be themselves and it's not no picking on nobody. We gotta come out and compete. Mm-hmm. Everybody no love and that's my model, man. I, I I'm built off love to be honest, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's Showcase, and that's what I give out, and that's what I want to be around. So, mm-hmm. when you know it's love, and, and, and God is in my spirit. So, mm-hmm. no, that's really my no. body. Mm-hmm. That that is great, man. That's great. Hey, I want to do a couple of little housekeeping things before we go. And again, and, and mom, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but I would love for you to lead us out in prayer at the end. Could you do that for us? Okay, okay. Hold on one second. Perfect. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, transition army. If we were able to make you laugh, smile, and think during this broadcast, my good friends, you have accomplished something major today. So celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. So, guys, I'm so happy you guys, you know, get a chance to watch Transition Tuesdays. Each and every Tuesday, I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart, guys. I appreciate you all out there. Oh, man, I want to thank my guests, Ms. Deborah Beeman and Mr. George Beeman. Hey, guys, first off, before we leave... George, you got any, uh, you want to give us some social media? Just in case people want to contact you, man. Uh, yeah, my Instagram, George underscore Beeman, is real easy. My name, just an underscore in the middle. Beeman. Okay. okay. Facebook, George Beeman. Uh, yeah, watch out for me. I'm going to do a lot, be doing a lot of big things this summer, this okay. upcoming year. Okay. Kids, professional, just stay in tune, stay locked in. Um, I do this thing, Bible and Ball. I work out, then I post the scripture, mm. and you know, just tap in with me, and I can explain it to you, or we can have a conversation. And it's not just you don't gotta be Christian, Catholic, anything. You can be of any 
religion, we can have a conversation, you know what I'm saying, and just mm -hmm. bring up together, you know what I'm saying, because a lot of the religion, a lot of the religions are so similar, yeah. but we try to divide, you know what I'm saying, so mm -hmm. I'm posting that, don't think it's just that, if you're from a different religion, different cause, pull up on me, you know what I'm saying, talk to me, let's discuss something, you know what I'm saying, let's get an understanding of each other, let's get, mm -hmm. let's share spirits, you know what I'm saying, if mm -hmm. your spirit is around someone with the good spirit and just walking in the same direction I'm walking in so mm -hmm. it's not a it's not a race it's a marathon so you know what I'm saying whatever place you are on your journey continue to strive and get better each and every day pray more show more love mm -hmm. I love y'all mm -hmm. thank you man I appreciate it mom you want to you want to give any social media handles out at all big New York you heard it? okay <laughs> Power. Yep. Like, we separated eight years before he was murdered. Oh. And I remained faithful. And he was murdered in 2016. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. And I still remain faithful mm -hmm. because that's what God said. Mm -hmm. and, and people tell me, oh, you're young, you have your whole life, but no, 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 no. It's not like that. I'm comfortable with what God said. Mm -hmm. And that's just me. Right. But, you know, that speaks loud and it also sets an example because we were called to lead by example. Mm -hmm. And that's what I have to do. I have to be obedient. Because being obedient to God is better than any sacrifice. Right. That you can offer. Right. And so 